All right. So, um, hi everyone. Sorry, I just had a fit of the giggles because I've been with some of my closest, my closest tribe, some of my the people I love. We just had lunch together, and we were in a fit of laughter. But <laughs> I'm here. And um, for those of you who tuned into my radio show, I mentioned that I would be back on air here live in an hour. And I would love to hear from you. And I would love for you to, if you, if you say hi in your comments below, tell me where you're from. I just love it that these videos go all over the world. And so tell me, if, so write your country, write, you know, if you're from Norway or Ireland or Germany or wherever, tell me where you're from. I love hearing from you, all of you. Um, today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer some questions from people who wrote to me from France, from Paris, France, because a couple of months ago, I was in Paris doing an event and the audience there, the people there were so amazing and so beautiful and they wanted to keep the conversation going. And so I agreed that they could write their questions in to me. Actually, they would write their questions in to the producer in Paris and he would collect them together and then he would forward them to me. So every once in a while when I do Facebook Live, I'll be addressing these questions from the people in France. And some of them, they didn't ask me the questions while I was there. I was on stage, I had a Q&A, but not all of them had an opportunity to ask me a question because there were a lot of people, but also because sometimes people are shy uh, in that moment, or in that moment the question doesn't come to them and then it occurs to them later. So I'll be answering their questions today. But before I do, when I was on my radio show an hour ago, uh, there was a caller uh, who called in, I believe she called in from Germany, but she, uh, a beautiful lady, and she had a question about depression. She says she faces depression quite a lot and um, she's been through burnout and depression and she wanted some words of advice or help. So here's what I have to say about depression. Depression is actually pretty huge in the Western world. You don't see it as much in undeveloped countries. So the whole thing about people in third world countries and undeveloped countries being um, being unhappy or being more destitute is actually a myth because depression is very much a disease uh, of developed countries. We see it in our developed world. And from what I've noticed, um, of that the majority, the biggest reason for depression, it doesn't cover everybody, but the biggest reason for depression occurs because so many of us live a life that's not our own life. So what do I mean by this, that we live a life that's not our own life? We spend years trying to be something that we are not. We spend years trying to meet other people's expectations, um, expectations from culture, from society, from what is expected of us in terms of, um, you know, when we go through an education system, from what is being conditioned to us. We get conditioned as to what is good for us and what isn't good for us, or what we should aim for, who we should be. In other words, we look outside of ourselves for who we should be, what we should be, what we should do, when in actuality, it would serve us so much better to look inside of ourselves. Because as I always say, we are spiritual beings first. We are spiritual beings. We've come here with a purpose. We've come here with a calling. We've come here to fulfill our highest calling, whatever that may be. But then when we come here, we get distracted. We get distracted by our culture, by our education, by what we're being conditioned and what we're being taught as to what we should do instead of who, being who we really are. And as we keep following what other people tell us we should do and we keep trying to be something we're not, then when we fail in being something we're not, we beat ourselves up for failing. And when this is continuous, we end up burning ourselves out and eventually leads to depression because we feel lost. We feel lost, we feel lonely, and we don't know a way out because the only way out that we know is to work harder 
at what we know. We don't know how to change directions. So here's my suggestion. If you're going through depression or burnout or anything like that, what this is, it's the universe or your body or your life's way of telling you, you are not following your calling. You're not doing what you came here to do. You're not being who you truly are. You're not expressing what you came here to express. So now it's time for you to do that. And you won't find your answers outside by changing careers or going for another course or anything. You'll find your answers by turning inward and asking yourself this question, who am I? Who am I? And that's the only question you really need to ask because everything else, everything else about what you need to do, what is my purpose, what is my calling, what, what have I come here to express, all of that is a result of knowing who you are. So the only question is, who am I? Who am I? And allow yourself all the answers. Dare yourself to dream big. Many of us don't dare to dream. So dare yourself to dream as big as you want because if it's, if it's there, if it's bubbling under the surface, if it's an idea, a thought, a dream, that means it's something within you that wants to come out. It wants to be expressed. So allow it. Allow yourself some quiet time and allow yourself the permission of your imagination, of your dreams, and of your spiritual expression. And it could turn out to be anything. It could turn out to be um, anything that when you ask yourself, who am I? It could be that you're a budding singer or a budding actor or a musician or an artist or any number of things. Whatever it is, dare to express it, dare to let it out. Give yourself permission. And remember one thing, it's not about going out and chasing your dreams. It's about attaining the clarity within, knowing who you are within, and then what will happen is that your path will, will unfold before you. Um, and I want to thank all of you for, who are listening so far. And uh, here are my hearts and smileys, sending you all so much love, so much love. And now um, my dear Milena is, is going to read out the questions. And these are not questions which you've posted. I will get to your questions which you post below, but um, I'll take care of these questions which have been submitted by my listeners in France. 24-year-old Claire says, I had everything that I wanted in life and did nothing with it. Now I feel that I am lost with no direction, and moreover, I feel bad and guilty. I am young, but I already have this heavy feeling that I wasted my life. Could you please help me to change it or change the perception of it? And in fact, that's a great question because so much of what I just said applies to you. So first of all, you are young. You have so much time ahead of you. You have your whole life ahead of you. You're very lucky because you've got your youth. And so all I ask you to do is turn inward. Don't, don't let the voices outside distract you. Don't let people tell you what you should be. Um, shoulds don't belong in anybody's vocabulary. So there's no should about who you should be, what you should do. Your only question is, who am I? Who am I? And start to go on an inward journey of discovering who you are. That's all you need to do. And don't forget to have fun, because we forget that. You're young, have fun, laugh, go out with friends, enjoy yourself, and you absolutely don't need to feel guilty about anything, really anything. And, and for the women out there on your discovery, if you find out you're a diva, good for you. Go for it. Because I'll tell you something, I found out that I was. <laughs> so um, let's go on to the next question. Anushka says, after a painful event in, in my life, I embraced light and love that I could feel everywhere, into my body, into my heart, into people. And suddenly I had a panic attack. I was afraid. I don't understand this fear. Is it the fear of the unknown to let go? Why do I feel that? Why am I afraid of who I am? Um, now, my, my sense is that you would be afraid of who you are because of what you've been conditioned to believe. And that's my sense. And also because you feel we have been conditioned that we need structure. We need... Um, we need to be something, we need titles, we need labels.
But in actuality, if we can get comfortable with not having the labels, not having the structure, and allowing ourselves this feeling of ambiguity, of being comfortable in ambiguity, that's where the real gold lies. That's where the real gifts are. That's where magic happens. So it's great that you've been able to get there and I'm just inviting you to get comfortable there and then allow the world to open up before you. So thank you for your question. Fabian asks, what do you think about all these concepts of mind over matter and law of attraction? Can we say that your deep experience was that? So I want to clarify here about my views of law of attraction or even more so the use of the term mind over matter. I don't actually believe it's mind over matter because our minds actually play tricks on us. I believe it's something deeper than us. It's our true spirit, our true essence, our soul, whatever we want to call it. Our calling, our uh, passions, our will to live, all that comes from a deeper place, a much deeper place than our mind. Our mind sometimes plays tricks on us and our mind is the one that convinces us that uh, that creates limitations and convinces us that we can't do what we actually came here to do and we can't be what we came here to be. So it's something much deeper. So how do we get, how do we access this deeper place? The way we access it, number one, is by getting quiet and not taking in the voices from outside that convince us differently. Um, number two, it really is about knowing that, you know, like things like law of attraction and about creating our reality, that although we do create our reality, we do attract things, we attract them from who we are. It's not from just what we think, it's not just from our mind, but it's from who we are. And who we are is so many things. Who we are is a combination of what we came here to be. It's a combination of us suppressing what we came here to be. It's our what our mind has been con uh, conditioned to do or think or be. It's what our soul or our calling wants us to be. It's all these things and our culture and our conditioning. There's so many elements to it that is at play and many of them are hidden. And we don't usually take all that into consideration when we talk about law of attraction. So I would go deeper and I would actually, again, go back to that question, who am I? Who am I to know who we are? And back to my situation, what do I think happened to me? I think that what happened in, that, in those hours that I was in a coma, I got in touch with my true essence, my soul, my spirit. It cut through all the physical conditioning, all the mind, the body, the culture, the gender, everything that I'd been trained to believe. It cut through all of that and went, and, and I went to the place of where I truly was just pure essence, the person that I was born to be. Stephanie says, I've been in love with a man for three years who doesn't care about me. He's always in my mind. I miss him. At the same time, I have the feeling that my feelings are not based on true love. They're more based on pain, lack, and fear. It's like a bad addiction, maybe like yes. cigarettes. Why is it so hard to get rid of these feelings of dependency and addiction? It is not. It's You're absolutely correct. It's not true love because if it was true love, you... Um, you would love yourself enough to not allow somebody to treat yourself that way. You would know what true love is when you love yourself. And this is why I always come back to the importance of loving yourself. It's only when we truly love ourselves do we not allow other people to treat us that way. We, um, other people can only treat us the way we allow them to. Other people can only treat us the way we allow ourselves. What you have shown, when you allow someone to abuse you, that person is a mirror for how you are treating yourself. So what this is, is a call for you to start loving yourself. So it's not about the other person. What I want you to do now is to make a commitment that you are going to start loving yourself 
from this moment on, you're going to start loving yourself. So every day you are going to practice at least one random act of kindness for yourself. And I know that we talk about practicing random acts of kindness for other people. You can do that too, but you can, but first, and this is more important, is doing one random act of kindness for yourself. It has to be something that you wouldn't normally do. It has to be something that you make time to do, something that you are willing to spend more money on than you would normally spend on because you deserve it for no other reason than you deserve it and you are worthy of it. So make that commitment every day, at least one act of kindness, and it could be anything from buying yourself a little gift to relaxing in the bath or going to a movie you've been meaning to watch but kept thinking you don't have time to do. So make time and spend some money on yourself and make that a commitment, okay? Um, now let's take oh, one, one question from one of the listeners. Oh, there's, there's one, one more, more question, yeah. okay. Theory asked, is life with pain worth it? Life, well, first of all, um, life is not supposed to be painful, at least not all of it. Every now and then there's pain interspersed and while we're going through the pain, of course it's painful, but after we come out of the pain, there's always a lesson, there's always a gift, there's always something that makes us better, more human, more divine, deeper, more empathetic. So there's always a gift. So when the question is, is a life of pain worth it? It depends how long the pain is. If it's, if you feel your entire life is a pain, I'm going to say something extremely provocative here and we'll probably get some um, feedback, but um, to me, a life is not supposed to be painful. And when people experience leaving their lives and crossing over to the other side, to me, that's not a bad thing at all. That's not a bad thing. And very often a life of pain, a life of illness, sometimes is an opening for us to cross over. And there's nothing wrong with that because there are bigger and deeper things uh, for us to continue in our journey in the other realm. Um, we don't actually leave. We just change form. We're just not physical anymore. But no life, physical life is not supposed to be continuously painful. And if you are feeling it is, then um, create a community and seek help. Seek community, seek love, seek joy, and look for something that you're passionate about. Melisha asks, can you explain those people that commit suicide, what happens to them, especially since they didn't live out their purpose? It kind of builds on something you just said. Yes. Yeah. Nothing bad happens to them because it takes a lot of pain for us to leave this world. People who are in joy, people who are having fun, who have lots of love in their life, they would never choose to leave the world. And so if somebody commits suicide, um, there's no judgment or anything. And when they're in the other realm, they start to understand why they were in the situation they were. And all they feel in the other realm is, is pure empathy and pure love and pure joy. And it's completely unconditional. Um, there is no feelings of guilt or anything, but they do, if they want to, get the opportunity again to relive their purpose. Um, and for those of you who've read my books, know that my belief in reincarnation is a little bit different in that I don't believe that um, time is linear. I believe that all of time happens at once, but even then we do have multiple lives. So we still get an opportunity to still fulfill whatever is our purpose in other lifetimes. So I appreciate your question. Thank you so much for that question. Uh, thank you everybody and, uh, and stay happy, stay laughing. Don't take life so seriously. Uh, um, have fun regardless, find joy in everything, find the humor in things because I swear life can be pretty funny. The world we've created is actually pretty darn hilarious when you look around and when you look at the kinds of things we've created. Okay, so have fun, enjoy, until next time. Mwah.